Hey guys, it's Marta. Welcome to this week's video. Today I wanted to talk about pots. I will show you my uh, entryway pot container compositions and a very special place that is in semi-shade and all of the plants are also in containers. Let's begin. So here is our entry, our, the door to our house, and I always want to have a lot of flowers in my four pots. I start with spring uh, containers and then I go to the summer ones. And in the summer, I absolutely love to have supertunias here. I love supertunias because they are such prolific plants. They bloom for so long. When they start in May, they bloom for us until October or even November, depending when we have a hard frost. But they are always in full bloom. There are, there are always so many flowers and they are very, very healthy. And what I love about them is that they are self-cleaning. You don't need to deadhead them to uh, make the plants bloom more. They will bloom no matter what if you give them water and if you fertilize them. My favorite supertunia must be bubblegum. This plant, if I was to choose one plant, uh, it would be that because it blooms like crazy if I put it in a pot, if I put it in a border, if it's raining on it, it doesn't care. It just blooms all the way through the summer if you give it water and fertilizer. But of all the supertunias, I think this one is the most prolific. Then with bubblegum, I planted snowdrift and uh, I've tried all of them and snowdrift, I must say, it really keeps up. So uh, there are two uh, bubble gums, two snow drifts, and this year I've decided to interplant them with hydrangea. This is little lime and also salvias. These are annual salvias that also bloom through the whole seasons. Over the years I've tried growing supertunias in different containers, smaller, bigger, and I think the bigger ones are better because at the beginning of the season it doesn't really matter but when we get to summer the end of summer and then early autumn it really shows that a bigger pot is better for them because they have more soil uh, the moisture is better uh, and the roots have a uh, space to grow uh, they will perform better so these pots are usually looking the best even in September. Then I try uh, to remove them for the autumn uh, display and I will try something different but I love this space. It's really always when someone comes, they just like, like hello, welcome to our house. Because I love symmetry, so uh, I always do that, that these pots are symmetrical. But this hydrangea, I think, is not a little lime. I'm afraid this is a bigger one because it's so much bigger than the other one. We'll see when it blooms. I think I've, I've mistaken the little plants when I was planting them. We'll see what will happen with this pot. But I also think that they are loving similar conditions. They love a lot of water, a rich soil, because uh, the supertunias are getting fertilized every week. Hydrangea is also getting that. But it, as you can see, it's pretty green. And we'll see uh, how they will look uh, when they flower. Uh, I had uh, a lot of plants, the bare root plants, and I planted them in those containers in spring. We'll see how it goes. I'll show you a supertunia that is growing in the ground in the border. In this border, I have two huge box balls that are the oldest ones in my garden. Then we have a Russian sage that is called Perovskia. Then we have the same salvia, salvia farinacea, sorry. And then we have supertunia bubblegum. It doesn't look like much now because we had a huge rainstorm just a few hours ago. So it's been smashed by rain. But uh, next day it will look pretty normal. And this is what I love about bubblegum, that even if we get a huge storm, they will, uh, they will look better. <laughs> Not now, because it was like really, it was pouring cats and dogs, how do you say that? It was really crazy. It will look beautiful and in a few months it will cover some of the gravel here. I have one more space that it's really tranquil and it's in semi-shade. Let's go. 
So last year we did a remodel of our garage and we made it into a space where we are supposed to exercise. If we do that is a good question, let's hope we will this year. But uh, this door that is a garage door is not used anymore. So I've decided that I wanted to create a space and design a space that would be a nice uh, space to sit on. It's in the shade most of the day, but it's very light. It gets sun in the morning and then it is in light shade. As you can see, it's quite uh, light here, but no direct sun. So my idea was that I wanted a bench that I could sit on in the shade. Uh, I also had my climbing hydrangea that is on the wall and it's growing in the ground. But then I had a huge longing for a Japanese maple. I love those uh, trees. They are small, they are compact and they are very airy. So I started with one. This is Seiru. Uh, it is a beautiful Japanese maple that turns incredible red in the fall, but now it's just such airy leaves. It gives such a nice feeling. Growing my Seiru in a big pot last year and even overwintering it here near the uh, wall was a huge success. So this spring I decided to buy two more ma uh, Japanese maples. This one is called Ryusei and it is uh, a pendula type of uh, maple. And then I bought one that is called Emerald Lace, a very small one. And now there are three of them and I think they look so good. Then I thought, what else do I need? I need something evergreen. So I decided that I needed skimias. I love their scent in the spring, but then during the season, they look beautiful with their shiny leaves. So we have a maple, skimia, then anemones. Uh, I absolutely love their blue flowers. Uh, I forced them this spring and they are blooming really uh, prolifically. So there are two containers with them. And then in the front, that is a place that gets most uh, sun. There are super tunias. And I have silverberry and snowdrift, a very light white flowers, touch of pink. I think they go very well together. My left side gets more shade. So here you can also see some skimias, hostas. This hosta is called guacamole. And I think it's one of my favorite hostas because this green is really, really nice. And I love how it corresponds well with the color of the Seiru maple. Then I got a few hydrangeas, interesting hydrangeas. One is called Runaway Bride and another is French Bolero. And these hydrangeas are new types. They got a lot of uh, buzz because they are supposed to be incredible. We'll see. I, this is my first year with them, so I will be talking about their amazingness after I've had them for some time. But I, I really like how they look like. The last pots are the pots uh, that uh, I planted with plants that I had uh, on hand because they were somewhere in tiny containers. So there are a few hydrangeas and, and astromerias and even some stipa. We'll see how they will do. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you about how to grow things in containers so they thrive, they are very, very happy. It's a bit different than growing things in the border. I believe that you can grow almost anything in a container, but it really depends on the size of the container. The bigger the, the container, the better because then when you have a large vessel, then the soil will not dry up as fast as in a small and tiny one. So I always try to use huge plastic pots that I got some plants in a few years ago. I always keep them at the back of my garden and I'd like to use them for containers. If you use a lot of plants and some of them will be creeping down, they will hide the, uh, the pots and I use the black ones and I think you don't really see them, uh, but they are really, really big. If I was to invest in such big pots, that would be a lot of money. And then I had those pots and it's great that I can use them. Whenever I plant something in a pot, I try to find a soil that is meant for this kind of plant. And in pots, it's always better to use soils that will hold the water well. Watering is the crucial thing when you grow things in pots. You cannot let them dry. Maybe sometimes you can if this is a plant that likes it. But uh, here, all the plants that you see, they like to have uh, moist soil. So every uh, evening I come here and I water my plants with a hose. So I think that this space could use some kind of water feature. I think if we had a gentle 
dripping water sound. I get some because I have a fountain very close, like six meters from me, but here it would also be great. And then all you need is a glass of wine and just sit and relax and look at those beautiful plants. But this space uh, could be only gravel and a door, but you can always find a space in your garden that you can change with just a few pots, uh, a bench, and you, you, it can become such a special place where you can really relax. Please let me know in the comments, uh, what do you grow in your containers? Do you have a shady spot? Maybe you have full sun spot. What do you grow? What do you like? Which colors do you like? And please let me know which of the plants or which of uh, the, the full sun uh, containers or the shady ones were your favorite. If you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing and then you will see the next video probably with peonies and roses. See you next week. Mm -hmm.